it started from just a simple idea started in a bedroom and then brick by brick we built the business i think great entrepreneurs are people who can spot risks that are worth taking and then execute to it blocking out all the noise Welcome to DIY Business Bites. What does it take to be a successful 40 under 40 women entrepreneur with a multi-career business? We are going to find out as Advaita Nair, the co-founder of Nika and CEO of Nika Fashion, gives us a peek into her entrepreneurial world. Hi Advaita, welcome to the show. Thanks, happy to be here. So Advaita, tell us about your journey, you know, all the milestones and the key lessons out there. Yeah, so um, I've had a lovely time with Nika. I actually joined Nika back in 2012, right when the business started. I joined my mother. Um, it was really pretty much the first job I had, and I've loved every minute of the last 11 years. Uh, it started from just a simple idea. I started in a bedroom, and then brick by brick, we built the business. Just started as online beauty, then added beauty stores, added a beauty private label, then moved on to fashion, built this beautiful fashion website, and now we're building fashion brands as well. Okay. So I think it's been a lovely journey and lots of interesting milestones along along the way and I feel really lucky that I've had a chance to experience it. Okay, so Advita, what does it take to be a successful women entrepreneur and are there any management lessons that you have for startups out there? So I think uh, to be a good entrepreneur, whether you know female or male, I think I have a couple of thoughts. The first is uh, it's incredibly important to think long term about a business. I think that's something I picked up over the last couple of years that businesses cannot be built overnight. They can't be built in a couple of years. I think at least 10 years need to go into building something that can be meaningful. So building your business brick by brick with a vision in mind, a sight in mind, not getting swayed by any temporary slowdowns or any temporary lows is really important. Uh, taking the right decisions that are not too short term in orientation is also important. I think the second thing is learning how to take risks, right? So I think entrepreneurship is fundamentally about taking risks seeing an opportunity when no one else sees an opportunity and for a very long time often there will be many naysayers but I think great entrepreneurs are people who can spot risks that are worth taking and then execute to it blocking out all the noise and then I think finally entrepreneurship is a roller coaster um, I think at least a couple times a month you feel like someone's punched you in the gut and uh, that's just the nature of building from scratch so I think the last lesson is that you've got to be tough and you've got to toughen up and really uh, become so resilient if you really want to thrive and enjoy the journey. Okay, so Advita, where did this idea of Nika fashion germinate from? And how do you, you know, look to make a difference and differentiate yourself amidst all the stiff competition? So our, our trist with fashion started about four years ago. We started to think that, look, we've built this wonderful business in beauty where millions of women trust us for beauty. Uh, and a lot of those women started asking us, why don't you sell us fashion as well? Uh, we were really tempted by the size of the fashion market. It's obviously much larger than even the beauty market. And we felt that there was an opportunity for someone to come in and do fashion differently. Right. So what we're really trying to do with Nika Fashion and what I've been trying to execute on for the last three years is build a differentiated fashion platform that is slightly more premium than what exists out there in the market. Uh, that is very fashion forward, which is very much about style, which is about trend and not just leading with discount and price. So that's our differentiation. I think we've carved out a beautiful niche for ourselves. Uh, as for the you know latest earnings that we released, uh, we have over 2 million trailing 12-month customers. Uh, we've become a sizable part of the overall Nika fashion business. So we're feeling pretty good about where the business is today. Okay, okay. And what are the segments where you see the maximum traction in? And even geographically, which are the cities where Nika fashion tends to get the maximum orders from? So I think in terms of assortment, we want the site to be really comprehensive. So we have everything from Indian wear, Western wear, accessories. We even have... Uh, you know small kids and home offering i would say definitely we're much stronger in women uh, we're very strong in apparel within apparel it's a pretty much a 50 50 split between indian wear and western wear and then some of the interesting things we've been doing is going abroad and bringing some of the best international brands into the country which has also been uh, garnering a lot of traction with our customers so that's a little bit about the assortment in terms of cities i would say tier one um, is definitely the predominant uh, you know focus but we are really pleased with how tier 2 and tier 3 are growing as well for us okay okay and uh, you know in terms of sustainability uh, in a world where increasingly businesses are looking to be more sustainable how is nika you know featuring there yeah so I think, you know, I think a lot about that and I do think that there are two things that we're trying to do. So the first is on assortment. So on assortment, we have over the last 18 months identified and curated about 600 responsible uh, brands across the country. 
Uh, we're typically looking for brands that are focused on craft, uh, that they're leveraging local communities to make product. They're usually using locally sourced product. Uh, they sometimes work on recycle. So I think there are a couple of different elements which can help a brand classify as responsible. So I think what we're trying to do is make that assortment available to the customer. I think the second part of you know, the whole sustainability conversation is really education and it goes beyond assortment. So we try to use our voice as Nike Fashion to really educate the customer on what does it mean to be sustainable. I think a lot of people are not even clear. Frankly, the most sustainable thing to do is to consume less. Hmm. So we actually just try to communicate and educate through our social media what is sustainable fashion, what makes something sustainable, how can you be more sustainable in your actions and we hope that by educating, people can make the right choices for themselves. Okay, where do you see the fashion industry headed in the next few years in terms of offline versus online retail? So I think fashion is an incredibly compelling space in India. Uh, it's growing incredibly fast. It's projected to be about a $125 billion industry by 2025. Within that, online should be about 30%. Um, so the online share is obviously growing fastest over the next couple of years. I think in terms of key trends I'm seeing, the first is obviously the penetration of online, and that is why we are also focused on yes. online. The second is I think women are getting really excited about trying new brands, women and men both. So I think that presents an opportunity for a lot of new brands to emerge. Uh, you know, homegrown brands, but also international brands can enter the market. And then finally, as Nike, we always believe in the slight premiumization. We believe in the premiumization story in India that every level of customer is starting to look for the next level when it comes to consumption. So we're betting on premiumization.